Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Um, I just want to talk to you about evolution and philosophy. And just to say that I believe that it's quite clear to me that philosophy plays a significant role in the interpretation of data when it comes to the discussion, uh, discussing the issue of intelligent design and creationism and evolution. So for example, it's ruled out of existence before we even begin that there could be an intelligent designer uh, when it comes to investigating the various aspects of nature. In other words, all we have is a natural cause uh, for natural events. Um, and that is an evolutionist position, uh, and it's a position, a philosophical choice. Uh, so that interprets their information. When they look at a gene, when they look at the complexity of a gene, the only explanation they can give of the complexity, complexity of the gene is a, a naturalist explanation. So the philosophy is having a massive impact on how we begin to interpret the evidence of, say, for example, the gene or evolutionary process. The second aspect is the nature of the evidence itself when we're collecting archaeological, geological, whatever information that we're picking and or, or, or looking at, we're going to use the philosophy that is significant for us in order to take that information and collect it together. So when you look at the strata of the uh, geological time scale and you find that there are um, you, you find that there are fossils, that are large fossils, uh, in, 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 uh, in the brackets where there are smaller fossils, which completely just messes up the evolutionary chain. The evolutionaries will just push that aside and just collect the data and create a, a geological tree that is, isn't actually based in reality. Why? Because their philosophy, their c philosophical commitment is bringing and putting evidence that they want to produce in order to prop up their philosophical position. And then thirdly, at the end of the process, when we're looking uh, way back at the evidence that we've collected and how we interpret that evidence is also philosophical mediated. For example, uh, the argument that Dawkins says uh, that there is a common ancestry, if we look right through the history of um, the DNA structures, right through all the animals. There are common uh, genetic patterns that we can find and so the argument is that we must have all descended from the same line. But that's an interpretation. Science can't actually tell you that. It's an interpretation of the information. It could, it could actually point to a, de a common designer who designed everything. Um, so, in other words, philosophy begins uh, at the interpretation of information concerning evolution. Philosophy is in the middle of interpretation, and philosophy is at the end. And not only for the evolutionist, but also for the creationist and for uh, the intelligent design, all uh, everyone is influenced by these philosophical presuppositions. The problem is. The evolutionists will not be honest about their philosophical commitments. Thank you for listening and take care.